Hi everyone, it's Brandon from Songwish. We're going to give you another video today that's going to be clarifying some things on Remedy 2, the workflow, and just generally how to use it. So we got a really good comment about two weeks ago, and I'll, I'll bring up the document version of it that I put here, and it's it's got a lot of great stuff. One of the users, uh, one of our Remedy 2 users, um, he put together a comment on our Remedy 2 MIDI sampler overview video on YouTube, and he just outlined his confusion at the time of using it and how he's come to uh, make sense of it. So he's able to use Remedy 2 with a lot more confidence, and that's great. And he's sharing it so that we can hopefully unconfuse you guys so you can use it better and uh, get the most out of it. So here we go, let's go through it. So first of all, they purchased and they're happy, so that's great. And uh, so started using this video to uh, this one, Remedy 2 MIDI Sampler Overview, and wanted to share his confusion to let others understand. So very, very good on you. Thank you very much. In this video, pads are named as notes. And from other software's typical knowledge, when you drag a complete long MIDI file onto a pad, you expect that the whole MIDI file will play on that note. So let's go see what uh, what they mean by that. Go to Remedy and um, clear out brand new instance of it. Now let's choose a MIDI file. Now that we're in edit mode, we can choose a MIDI file. And uh, we got it there. You can see that there's just a little portion of the MIDI file loaded, but um, this is just depending on the size of your sampling. So right now that's four for, for beats, and if you want to increase the beats, you can do so by the plus button. And I guess the first thing to, to realize that this is a MIDI sampler, and it's not really a MIDI player for playing like an entire MIDI file, unless you want it to be, because... If you really wanted to, I'm just clicking and there's more and more MIDI coming into the view. That just means that you'll be able to trigger all of these MIDI notes by sustaining a single MIDI note on your controller. See? But it just, you know, keeps going and going. So like, you may not want to do that. So that's why what we did was we just default the size to four. And that gives you a, a reasonable chunk to deal with at once at any given time on your controller. So you can see that I can trigger many four beat slices on the MIDI controller. All right, so I think this paragraph here just elaborates the paragraph above. So we'll move on to this paragraph here. So here, when you like a note, you press the check icon bottom right of a pad. So this would apply the slice to the pad so that now it holds the selected slice. Let's take a look at Remedy and see what uh, we mean. All right, so now going back, you know, with what, what I said where you can trigger slices on the keyboard, your MIDI controller, or the piano roll editor, however you like, you eventually want to get at a slice that you you know, particularly like and can work with and uh, that is done in edit mode. So if you like, let's say, let's say we like this one here. So now the important thing is to click this little check icon bottom right. What that does, if I select it there, you can see that it applies because it stops the playback. And then whenever I click the mouse on the pad, you can hear that it's immediately that selection that I had set with the check mark. So here, if I move away, here's, here's me moving away from that slice on the MIDI controller. And then I can come back to it by clicking with my mouse. That proves that the selection has been persisted in the pad. So now what this means for the global mode is that when I, you know, click the wrench here top right, this wrench is kind of like, you know, edit or settings and uh, you can change from global to edit mode. So now I'm in global mode 
And now if I click the pad, again, it's that selection. So that was triggering MIDI slices in edit mode. Now let's take a look at MIDI triggering in global mode. So let's say I wanted to press that pad just via my MIDI controller. So what you should keep in mind is that this C negative two is the note that that pad is mapped on. So in order to trigger the pad, I would have to press C negative two on my MIDI controller. So let's try to do that. You can see that the, ah, there, I got it. You just have to try a little bit. Press transpose on your MIDI controller if you need to. And uh, here you can see that you're coming close with these blue highlights on the pads. And finally, boom, I got it. So then they just, they wrap things up by saying um, some really nice things about Remedy 2. Uh, how people who write that they already have a MIDI editor should play with this to understand. Um, we're at a completely new level of editing. So that's, that's very kind. And um, it's not just a quarter. Um, yeah, but it could play melodies, riffs, chords, drum fills, bass lines. Yeah, all that stuff. Anything MIDI. So yeah, if you guys... Um, Hopefully this video um, clarified some things, and if not, just leave some comments and we can address them in comments or with another video. And hopefully other people, we can continue the, the trend of um, unconfusing each other. So that'd be great. So um, yeah, take care.